Welcome, joy of conscious living. We are covering sadhana panchakam, five verses on sadhana. Sadhana means practice, regular practice with wisdom and the goal is awaken to permanent peace and happiness. Awaken to heightened level of awareness where, where there is no stress, no duality and no conflict, whether you sleep or you don't sleep, whether you are busy or free. That peace, that consciousness is not affected, dictated by the mind and the changes that is happening in the world. So before we go into these steps of sadhana, who is a seeker on the path? First thing that his mind or her mind is not dictated by the world and its likes and dislikes. So it means the seeker prepares the mind how not to get affected. First, couple of points. The seeker shifts working of the mind from pleasure seeking, escaping from the pain to the discovery of the permanent happiness. Mind says, if you don't sleep, something will happen to you. Nothing is going to happen. Nothing. So the mind is constantly guided by the principles of wisdom. You start working on the opposites of the world. That makes you a seeker. The world, You cannot change the world. There may be a profit, there may be a loss, there may be a likes, there may be a dislikes, and pain and the pleasure. Huh? Coronavirus, after a few months, there will be no corona. Other challenges are still there. Another important point in the seeker is the humility. So how we translate that humility here? The seeker understands clearly whatever his mind knows about the world outside cannot help him to find the real self. So what happens to his intellect? He knows that he does not know anything. Why? because the outer knowledge is not going to help him discover the real nature. One more point, then it will make it clear to finalize the second step of the sadhana. A seeker is ready for examination in life at every moment, in every relationship, in every work, it's a professional, social, family life. And how to achieve that? You become a seeker by fourfold practices. At the same time, the teacher is also committed. What he is committed? He is committed to remove the ignorance. He is committed to remove the ignorance from the mind. Two part of the teacher. Teacher also perceives the blockages in the seeker's mind. And what is preventing him or her to succeed in meditation? Because if a seeker is aware of that, they will do it by themselves. So the teacher always, for the teacher, the seeker is the most important, not his and her questions, not his and her challenges. So that builds up a tremendous, unique relationship.
So now directly coming to the second step. Sadhana means what? Sadhana means doing practice. No. But doing practice with wisdom. So there comes the sadhana. So you see the sadhana means all the practices, roughly, loosely translated. Uh, all starts from the S. Seeker, the person who is ready to undergo the self-discovery. What is the goal? Sadhya. Sadhya means the goal. And what is the result? Siddha. So when any person follows all four S, he becomes sadhu. Sangeeta, that person becomes sadhu. You are sadhu. Everyone is sadhu. So sadhu in India is normally translated as a monk wearing orange-colored cloth, big dots on the forehead. Huh? Have you seen? No. <laughs> Who follows all the four aspects is a sadhu. Sadhu. We come back to sadhana panchakam. I'll repeat it again and again so that the things will become clear and clear in your head. So sadhana panchakam is a beautiful text. Five verses, 40 steps. Every line has two steps. Every line, every verse, you know, every couplet. We say shloka are four liners. So, four liners you have, or maybe you can say two liner, and every line has two steps. The first step we have heard, we have learned the, what is the importance of learning the principles of Eastern wisdom. Now, what is the goal of meditation? Is the knowledge of reality. What is the knowledge of reality? Our true nature. Now, if my mind and intellect do not discern clearly where is Arizona and where is LA. How can I start driving? Well, I'm giving the same example. Now, if my mind is not clear what is the goal of meditation, that is why we have to learn the principles of the Eastern, not only learning, but learning Learning that those principles which clears my mind. In the sadhana too, last week what we learned about what we learned. Ignorance, motive, desire, action. This is the sequence. So we have to break that sequence. Instead of ignorance, there must be a right knowledge. Oh, uh, Sam, so no, I have a motive of earning money. No, there should be a right motive. Think over it. Be very clear. Can I give an example? You are doing a business and you get upset over an employee. What is your goal in the business? To earn money. Why you get upset? No, but this guy is not doing a work properly. But question is, your goal is to earn money. It comes from the wrong knowledge. So now, what the master guides in the same second step, can we classify different activities and different karma? Can we classify? So that we become aware, we become conscious, and whatever the action that we do in our daily life follows discernment, follows wisdom. So when those actions follows wisdom, where is the problem of bringing any pain and the pleasure in any activity that we do? Where comes the challenge when your mind says, I'm very busy, fatigued and exhausted? See that, right knowledge. So I'm giving you one brief point of or brief ideas, what type of karma we perform in our daily life. Can we classify? 
yes, we can classify into different categories. So I'm not going very deep into it, but it will help these points. Can you become aware of involuntary and the voluntary karmas? Classify them. Where to classify them? In your head. First, listening the principle, understanding it. In the morning, the moment you wake up in the morning, am I doing involuntary karma or voluntary karma? You bring them in the field of awareness and see. Even if you do it one day, the first point, First point, first point, let me send a link again to uh, so, le so once, what are the involuntary and voluntary karma? First classification, coming back. Now, what our master says, that is the most important thing. What is the teaching says? What is the teaching of involuntary karma? You do it, it, there is no merit, there is no demerit. It is mandatory to do it. So make you keep your mind free from any kind of involuntary karma, the first classification. There is no sense of doership in involuntary karma. No, this is a voluntary karma, I'm speaking. But there is no sense of doership in involuntary karma, like eating, drinking, going to the restroom, sleeping. Uh, we, eat, we are eating food. But we don't say, no, let me digest the food now. Huh? I don't eat food to have a constipation or a diarrhea. It happens on its own. So there is no ego is associated with it. Understand that point. So locate all those involuntary karmas and say, remain relaxed. Constipation is there. Okay, I'll take care of it. So we build our ego. I have been eating like this. That is why I don't have it. I have been eating like this. That is why I have it. Keep your mind free. These are involuntary karmas. Don't attach any ego. There is no merit. There is no demerit. Means there is no sin. There is no sin. There is no virtue of doing this karma. Such karma do not generate any merit or demerit or impressions. Neither they create any attachment or detachment, nor is there any expectation. My mind should be very clear. Now, what about the voluntary karma? In the voluntary karmas, these karmas generate merit and demerits and the impressions on my subconscious mind. So how to understand those karmas? Now you have to become more and more aware in your daily life. First category, happiness and sorrow associated with the motor organs. We have five motor organs. It leads to an experience, sensorial experiences. And those sensorial experiences leads to pleasure or pain, happiness and sorrow. I just become aware I'm sitting comfortably. Yes, that is more important than sitting on a 5,000 costly chair. See that? Are you understanding that point? So happiness and sorrow is associated with the motor organ, voluntary karma. Happiness and sorrow associated with the mind. No, I like the company of David. I don't like the company of uh, Stephen. No, I like the... It is the mind is thinking. Why the mind is thinking? I'm creating a lot of karmas. It will lead me to pain and the pleasure, likes and dislikes. 
happiness and sorrow associated with the mind also causes the merit and this demerit. So just think of it. You listen to this, classify, make a list. Voluntary karma, involuntary karma. Is the motive is attached? Is, am I unconscious? That is going to cause a problem. Third point is happiness and sorrow associated with my intellect. What I intellect? Person A is wonderful. Person B is crazy. I'm, I'm not willing to participate. Or any, any action at the level of the intellect. If our decisions are consistent with the decision of others, we derive happiness. And if they are contrary, we become unhappy. Look at this sadhu. Indian sadhu. Have you seen this, Ashok? Indian sadhu. You have no clothes on the upper part of the body. Do you have any clothes on the lower parts of the body? Sorry, sorry. No, 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 no. no, no. I'm just asking you. <laughs> no, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> no. no, no, you can show. We have Naga sadhus. You see that Naga means totally naked. And uh, every 10 or 12 years, they have a big festival. 12, 20,000 Naga Sadhu means totally naked sadhus take a dip in the Ganges River. It's a big festival. Every Indian knows. So now it's okay. You can open your. Uh, coming to the second category of karma, it is known as prescribed karma and prohibited karma. Categorize them. Prescribed karma. I had a one beautiful woman who is earning almost six figures income in New York, who had a daughter, and she had been my student for a couple of months. Her daughter was going to uh, college there, and uh, this mother bought a car, a new car. After a month, that beautiful girl, cute girl, burnt the seat of the car with the smoking. So when I met this woman next time, she said, this is too much. I will take car from her. I'm talking about prescribed karma. Understand that. That is very important in our daily life. And if we don't understand its significance, we... It causes undue stress. I will take car. I will stop paying her the school fees. I said, stop it. Take the car from her. Give it to me. How simple it is. Why to get upset? You have given the car. I'll stop paying her the fees. Increase my uh, weekly session uh, payment. Can you do it? No, I cannot do it. She is totally a friend. So I said, you have given that much of money to your daughter. It is a socially prescribed karma. Only thing you should be doing is to take care of her mind. But in my opinion, as a mother, you have the resources, you must continue to pay because you have the resources. If you don't have the resources, stop it. Raise your hand. I have raised my hand in early days, six, seven years to, to my daughter that I cannot pay that much. Go ahead. I'm explaining you prescribed karma. They are mandatory to be done, but forget about any merit to be earned by their karma. I had a lot of complaints against my dad. 
you had a lot of complaints against your dad. Once you become dad, then you realize. <laughs> so keep your mind free. You become your mother, you become mother, you become dad. <laughs> then you realize what is the important. So our master says, you are, you have a family, you are living a social life, you have the kids. You did not ask the kid, will I help you to be born in my family? It is your responsibility. But make sure that you are not going to earn any merit. Still, you have to do it. Make it very clear. I told this beautiful woman that at least you cannot pay me. I want to know why you paid only to your girl, only to your daughter. Whatever she is doing is based on her own impressions. You do your own duty. That comes under the prescribed karma. The moment you escape these duties, we incur demerit. Understand two part. You don't get any merit by doing these prescribed activities of your you have a business, you are paying a minimum wage. The employee is not working, fine, you can bring them, counsel them, or at last you can say goodbye. How simple. Prescribed karma. But in cases of the family, we have to perform the right action. Right action. But don't take credit that I have paid your fees. What is a big deal? What is a big deal? Everyone does it. Animals do it. They don't take any credit. You have, we have heard the stories. So very clear. Keep your mind clear. This, here are my other resources as a parent, as an employer. So if you evade those activities, you will earn demerit. It will cause you stress and suffering. But if you do it, there is no merit. Forget about the merit. Forget about earning any credit. Taking care of the kids, member of the family, parents, no merit is gained. Remember this. Then there is a prohibited karma. Where are the prohibited karma? Uh, it's a highway, I'm driving in the midnight, so let me drive exceeding the limit. Prohibited karma. Blame and complain. I'm living as a family, I have accepted this human being as my spouse, as my friend. What is prohibited? No blame, complain, and reaction. Explain it. Explain everything. You, I should be open in my relationship. I should spell out. I should speak out. But minus blame, complain, reaction, that is known as prohibited karma. If you perform prohibited karma, if I live my life, with the actions which is prohibited, what is the result? You, I earn demerit. See that? I simply earn demerit. Are you understanding that? I simply earn demerit. But I don't acquire merit if it is, if it is not performed. I prohibited myself. Let me follow the social rules, the family rules, which are very clear to me. I don't get any merit. But if I don't, if I do it, I earn demerit. Are you understanding these two points? Very important. So it means my ego builds up. I have taken care of you for the last 20 years. Don't you see that? I paid you this. I always loved you. You always hated me. This, this this relationship doesn't work. 
it will never work. Are you understanding? Prescribed and prohibited, voluntary and involuntary karma. I'll take another minute and then say, now what is the secret? One secret. Understand the principle of Shreyas. What is Shreyas? Ask your mind and intellect to find out what is Shreyas in performing this karma. What do you mean by Shreyas? What is right and good? What is right and good? How to explain it? That right and good is all pervading one common element. That is my true nature. It is the pure consciousness. Let me refer to the pure consciousness. What is the best thing? How to respond or perform a mental action if one is crazy after me? I use many tips and tricks. You have done something wrong. I don't respond. If other insist it again, I say, okay, you are right. Until she calms down, then I sit and see that this is what I thought I should have done, and I have done it. Shreyas and prayas behind any activity. Prayas behind any activity. What is prayas? What I like and what is pleasant for me. That accumulates a lot of impressions, negative impressions in my life. So, As Ashok, sir, do your job to your honey. Don't worry what she is doing. She is also my student, so I can see that. Do your best to your son as you can. It Don't expect any merit. But if you don't do it, you will earn the merit. <laughs> it will cause you this stress. Are you understanding? Follow one thumb rule. Shreyas and the prayers. What is right and good? What it is, is reference? One example I can give you. And then we will start the meditation journey. My master received a couple and they were blaming and complaining against each other. My master said to the wife, who was more intelligent than the husband, he whispered and he asked me also to listen. That gave me a big lesson. You see that your husband always gets upset and uh, becomes angry. He told the wife that you, you seem to be more intelligent. So how you have to accept his anger? As if you are given an opportunity by the God to increase the level of your tolerance, kindness and humility. I told the same thing to one uh, wife in New Jersey. She said, what do you mean? Are you letting me down? I'm a great advocate of women live. I said, go ahead, continue. So after a few years, they divorced. It has nothing to do with my ego. Are you understanding that point? Are you getting it? In every point, Every action, either in relationship or in business or voluntary, involuntary, I follow the path of the Shreyas. You follow the path of the Shreyas, your mind will be empty and you can easily succeed into meditation. Close your eyes and let us start our journey of meditation. That completes the second step. We'll take up the third step. Next week, eyes are closed. Eyes are closed. Another point of doing the karma. Are you doing the karma for self-fulfillment or desire fulfillment? How to know it? Move the mind inside, facing, within. Body is steady. I'm adding now in every week, I'm going to add one 
are the other principles of Eastern wisdom to help your mind and intellect to be clear. This week, constantly ask your intellect and be clear. Are you doing it for self-fulfillment? If you are doing it for self-fulfillment, you are doing it, your focus is on the karma, and you don't do it with your ego. Desire fulfillment, both the factor comes. Looking inside. What you are looking, you are looking inside the forehead. Good. You are looking inside the forehead. Body is steady. Where you are looking inside the forehead? In the space. In the space. In the stays, one steadiness in the body and the mind is facing within. And in the stays, when we go to the next stays, being comfortable, just check it. Can you be comfortable in an easy, natural manner? We understood last week. Being comfortable, looking at the neck joint, feeling the sensation, being comfortable and steadiness. So I use the three word and it should go very deep inside your intellect in the mind. The moment it goes, your mind rises about the senses and the body. Move the mind on the shoulder joints, feel the sensation being comfortable and steadiness. You are moving casually and naturally. For a moment, we'll translate all the uh, principles into the practice. Are you doing some action through the mind onto the body? No. We are performing a mental action. See that? Mind on the mind. Again, understand. Why we are doing it? It belongs to the Shreyas. The karma is action is free from the past impression, motivation or ego. Move the mind on the shoulder joints. Be there. Feel the presence and experience sensation being comfortable and steadiness. When you are at the sea beach, looking at the ocean too far, and the mind says, what a beautiful sea. Can you compare that? You don't incur any, create any ego or, or uh, desire for the fruit of that action. That is what is being comfortable. Move the mind from the top of the head to the toes, looking at all the joints, feeling the sensation, being comfortable and steadiness. In the stage one, we go to the third point, being carefree. Only when the intellect is 100% clear. Those who are attending my Saturday session, I discuss about another book is Manisha. My, Manisha, my intellect is pure, simple, clear conviction. What is right and good? What is right and good? All these thoughts that enters into the mind do not belong to me. They are separate from me. That is the point of my Manisha, my wisdom. And that is the practice being carefree. So can I be a witness to any thought, every thought, good, bad, high, low, likes, dislikes? I keep it at a bay. 
how i explain you you look into the sky the birds are flying but you are aware of the space behind the birds about the birds these birds are flying and after some time they will come down that is the state of being carefree well move to the stage two we'll keep that intact gradually when we move into the higher experiences we can turn into the higher practice so you are looking deep inside we purify the mind we are looking deep inside the heart in the space and start breathing short in the quick breath from both the nostrils playful breath now the physical action is coming that is what i said that is what i said playful action if you perform breathing playfully cheerfully with your awareness deep inside the heart you will earn you will not earn the merit and also there is no merit but the result is the purification of the mind how many people are doing lot of breathing practices every day around the world in the name of the yoga? How many people have changed their mind? See that. So the intent of doing the practice changes completely. That brings the result. My friends, Quick, short, cheerful, playful breath. Do you claim? Oh, I'm I'm walking into my house. Do you claim any ego? No, the same way you are doing the breath. And now stop this breathing. And we will instantly start the second step of this second stage take a deep silent slow inhalation you know that we don't make a noise and while breathing out deep long louder humming sound mm. Long, deep sound. Continue, my friend. Continue, my friends. Deep, long, silent breathing. Breathing. Inhalation is deep. Inhalation is deep. Exhalation is full of humming sound. Deep, silent, slow inhalation, long, deep, louder, humming sound.
Stop it. You have to explore. We perform this action of humming also. Later in this week, you have to reflect on whether this karma pertains to voluntary, involuntary, prescribed, prohibited, and follows the shreyas of the prayers. You'll get a deeper insight. Now we'll move to the stage three. Let us follow a very simple and easier way. Move the mind on the head and the neck. Allow the mind to touch every cell of the head and the neck. What it means? Consciously touching. You're aware fully aware of the head and the neck and experience sensation, relaxation and stillness. Right arm, only awareness is there, feeling. The mind is moving on the right arm as if the mind is touching every cell of the right arm, from the shoulder to the fingertips. And experience sensation, relaxation, and stillness. How simple it is. Move the mind on the left arm. <clears throat> From the shoulder to the fingertips. <clears throat> so what is the point of karma here? Consciously touching. And leads to an experience of sensation, relaxation, stillness. Chest in the belly, in the front, and the spine in the back. The mind moves on the middle portion of the body. It is looking mentally, touching every cell, and you experience sensation, relaxation and stillness. Move the mind on the right leg. Sensation relaxation and stillness. Left leg, sensation, relaxation and stillness. Now what happens when the mind follows Shreyas? <clears throat> the mind is not waiting how long it has to be in the body. It moves on a conscious experience of sensation, relaxation, and stillness. That happens to a seeker. 
If I say that only happens to a seeker, I would be. It is a better statement. And I have already explained what it means by a seeker in the beginning. Now in that state of sensation, relaxation, and stillness in the entire body, look inside. The mind is looking within, living within. And what we do? Simple. The breath goes in. Mind drops Om. Om is <clears throat> symbol of unmanifest pure consciousness. So we engage and educate the mind. The moment the breath goes in, just drop Om and become aware of the crown of the head in the space. When the breath comes out, Shanti, looking inside the heart. Um, mentally, no movement of the lips or the tongue. Um, shut. Um, shut. So, we are using the mantra Om, which is a symbol of pure all pervading one consciousness. Shanti is the manifestation of Om. First it happens in the heart, then it goes down to the body. No change in the rate and the rhythm of the breath. How do you start Om um, and how do you start? You feel the sensation inside the nose. When the breath is going in, Om um stops. When the breath starts coming out, after a few milliseconds of a gap, you feel the sensation chanting. In what condition? In the conditions of Sensation, relaxation, and stillness in the body. So in the background, those three-pointed awareness is still working. What is those three-pointed awareness? The breath is going in and out, feeling the sensation, and there is no change in the rate and the rhythm of the breath. Over all these three-pointed awareness, you are dropping Om Shanti. So what happens? You are empowering the mind to follow the path of the Shreyas, not the prayers. If you leave the mind as it is, mind will say, okay, let me go back into my habit accumulated impressions. Now, drop the mantra, but continue to maintain awareness of the three-pointed awareness of the breath. And that is our stage number five.
in the state of being comfortable, sensation in steadiness, in the experience of sensation, relaxation and stillness, mind is living within. with the awareness of the breath and there are three points no change sensation breath is moving in and out Now, doing nothing, remain as you are. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om Shanti. Shanti, Shanti. Bring your awareness on the right hand, your awareness on the left hand. Lift your both the palms, place it on your eyes, open the eyes inside. Know your experiences. Let's share our experiences, bring the hands down. 